Back for day three on the Provo River electroshocking. Put some bass out there in that water. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Up above the dam, there are. <laughs> you're, you're in the wrong That's part right. of the country. <laughs> Curtis, Curtis kind of mentioned one thing I want all of you to be aware of. Take every picture you want. You can take as many pictures as you want. Share what you see here today. Get the word out that yes, there are fish. No, there are no fish. Whatever you see, you know, put the word out. Most of the netting, or a lot of the netting, will take place with the guys that have what I'm calling the metal nets. They will have four metal nets that come out of that electricity, and that's that's how the electricity is getting into the water, is actually right through those nets themselves. Um, so they'll have those in the water pretty much all the time. They'll catch a lot of those fish. And then the reason we're all here is we're going to have the white nets. A lot of us will have the white nets. They'll pass those fish off from the metal nets into the white nets and let's just relay them back to this pontoon boat where we have a live well and we'll dump those fish into there. All right, enough talking maybe. I'm going to hurry and start playing. Okay, um, let's get four of us on that pontoon. I'm going to put the boat in the river. It's a pontoon boat. It has the uh, generator on it and the live well. A, a big square tank to put the fish in. Water's cold. It's in. We're in the end of October. It's a wild thing. This is not easy work here, wading up through this stream. And you wouldn't think there were fish in there, but they're they're even in this fast water. Even when it's cold, they're in there. What I try to do on this video is is uh, I've showed a lot of the technical things in the in the other two. This one I'm going to try to catch the feel of it here. This is. This is this is fun, okay? It's it's hard work, but it's fun. There's there's a young man here, especially long coming around the front, that have been here for three different days doing this. And this is hard work. We're working up around the corner here. You'll probably recognize this. This is just below the Cottonwood Bridge. Uh, Cottonwood Bridge access, the first corner hole, which is a good hole. Not as good. It's a lot better than I thought it was, though, considering the fish that are in it. Working the way up through here, this is, you know, we're at, we're at uh, a fairly low flow here. You know, it's uh, not like the summertime. You couldn't wait through here in the summertime. There you go. But the fish are here. These, these brown trout, they're not migratory in this particular situation. They, they're pretty much staying at home, working up through here with these electric nets, stun the fish and then you get it, put it in the white nets and transfer it over. Even little ones, you know, the little sculptures. Transfer into the, to the buckets there, the live fish going out. We'll come back later and count them. This is exciting. Moving the fish back and forth. See the red generator on there. So there's, the, there's the tank. It has a, it has a, a wires uh, cables behind, and then you have the, the uh, electric nets in front, so it creates an electrical field.
Keep water, a little fresh water in the tank there. This when we dip out and so forth. So, so take the fish out. Keep it good. Need, needs to be enough water in there to keep them, keep it going. There's a lot of fish in there. It's cold water, but there's still a lot of fish. They need the oxygen. Man's kind of supervising there. Not easy work pulling that boat up against that current. Not easy work working on the side trying to catch the ones that the, that the wire nets miss either. Don't get them all. Had, had to make two passes today. And uh, I'm just showing, I'm just showing one pass here, but it's really a composite pass, if you will. But I uh, just wanted to show the different aspects of it. There's the Cottonwood Bridge, we call it. Working our way up towards the end of the end of the situation. This current is swift enough you can't be right in the exact center of it now. Having to work up the edges. The fish fish try to hide along the edges, so you have to work have to carefully work along the edges. Especially on the right hand side coming up here, it's deeper and and now uh, you can't even, can't even wait it. You want to be sure you don't fall down. They were in the thick of it there now. Tough going. It's deep on the deep on the far side there. Have to reach way down. Try to get them. I'm sure we're missing some in this situation. Here. Just do what you can. I'll tell you what, we didn't miss, we sure caught a lot of them. If we miss many, uh, uh, we sure were, sure were a lot of them. At the end of the run here now, and uh, now it's time to count. 408 whitefish. A lot of times you see just lay them there. Just lay them there. They'll look like they're dead and then five minutes later just touch them with a the mat and they'll swim away. How do you get the staff with their cut six six to seven times? We'll calculate how much fishing pressure there is, how many fish, how many fish people catch, and then we compare that to actually how many fish are in the river. We talk to anglers. That's what Stuart's doing three days a week. And he's, how many did you catch today? What sizes were they? Well, actually, if we don't see them, we don't get sizes. 290. So we get, yeah, everything would be a lot bigger than that. Yeah, and then you kind of extrapolate the data just to go We count how many anglers are on the river three times a day. We need to scope them. Whitefish, 303. Brown, 422. Now this is one of the biggest fish. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any as long as your leg in here, but that's plenty big there. That, uh, yeah, that's one of the bigger ones. Way over 20 inches, 22, 23, something like that. We'll, have to, we'll get the details of, on that later. I'm, I didn't write it down. Not the only big one. We could had a lot of them. 18, 17, 18, 19, 20 inches, but that was that was significantly awesome longer. Fish. Heavy fish. Got to keep good records. And then they're so 
close together. Oh, sorry. Um, it's just really contagious. We have professionals. We also had volunteer help, as you can see. Carefully measure, hand it over for weighing, call out the length, call out the weight, the record keeper writes it down, back to the net, back into the river. Little ones, big ones, whatever the size is, we measure it and do it. There's a little one, a little scuff in there. Measure him just like a, like he was a monster. Doesn't matter. Have to have the data. There he goes. Airborne into the water. There's another big fish. I'm checking him to see if it's are ready to spawn. It's in the fall here. Checking the condition of the fish to see if it's how it is. See if it's ready to spawn. There it is, that's the end of three hard working but fun fun days on the river.